Hello everyone. The book that I'm going to talk about today is how to avoid loss and earn consistently in the stock market. So the, coming to the first chapter of the book, this book talks about how to avoid loss. So basically investing in high quality stocks and holding them for the longer period of time. So a person should invest in high quality stocks such as stocks of big multi MNC companies such as Infosys, TCS or the stocks which are growing consistently from a large number of period and should hold them for a larger period of time instead of constantly buying and selling those shares. And the second part which would avoid you to uh, losing the money in the stock market is uh, by investing the money from your own funds rather than from investing from borrowed funds. A person when investing in the stock market should always invest with the funds that he is having extra. Supposing if a person is having 2 lakhs rupees and he wants to invest 3 lakhs and he borrows the extra rupees 1 lakh from the outside markets or some other banks for investing in the stock market that is wrong for the investing in stock market. He should only invest from the particular 2 lakhs he is having and rather he should invest 1 lakh instead of investing the whole amount of money. We should not invest in uh, uh, money can't be made in the short term. Supposing we, we always get a call from the stock traders like the price of the stock are growing, going up or it might be going down so it might be the right price of selling or buying the shares. That is the wrong misconception. We should let the stock prices to hold and we should not constantly sell or buy the shares because uh, the stock market is very fluctuating. The prices of stock might go up, it might come down, but we need to know that we need to hold the stock for a larger period of time for earning a consistent and good return. The second part of this book that we are going to talk about is stock market is not risky at all. Stock market is not risky, rather staying away from the investment in stock market is risky. If we find out like the uh, bank rates of fixed interest which the fixed deposit which the bank pays is around between 6 to 7 percent. But when we see in case of the stock markets we supposedly taking the sh uh, short risk in equity investments they give us a return of around 13 to 15 percent per annum. So if we calculate it uh, taking into account the inflation of the year we find out the fixed deposit interest of a bank rather yield negative uh, return on your investments but on the same hand equity investments give you positive and higher returns. <clears throat> on the same hand if we see equity investments are the best when, into, when the money is to be invested for a longer period of time. Equity investments are not meant for high return within a short period like within two to three years. If a person invests in, in equity for more than six to seven years and tries to understand the stock market then he would get huge returns. The Mainly the people lose money in the stock market is mainly because of the lack of knowledge in the stock market. So it is better that people first understand and study the stock market, the, how the prices fluctuates, what are the forces and factors influencing the prices fluctuation. So after once the person invests in this knowledge of studying the stock market then only he can earn more in the stock market. So investment in knowledge of uh, stock market is more than the investment in the stock market itself. The investment in stock market also gives you partial ownership in the business. For supposing the, if you buy 10 shares of a company, so you are, uh, you can also be called the owner of the 10 shares of the company. So that gives you the ownership of partial ownership of the company. Third chapter of this book is uh, states about the first step towards picking up of the winning stock. So in this case we discuss about like when we are choosing a stock of a company we should not take into consideration the profit and sales figure of a company because these are the figures which can be easily manipulated by the company to attract more number of investors. So profit and sales figure should not be considered while, take, while buying a particular share of a company rather the thing which an investor should look into is the return on equity because the return on equity is the thing which the company is paying back to its shareholders through the number of year, a particular number of years. So this shows how much the company is paying to back to its shareholders. The another thing which the investor can look into is the debt to equity ratio of the company. If the debt of the company consists of a larger part in the capital of the company then the investor should not invest in such a company rather he should look into the company where the equity portion of the company is more. This shows that the owners of the company have trust on their business and are more investing are investing more towards their business rather than taking debt from outside. Of this book 
talks about how to evaluate the management. Personally, it is next to impossible for a first-time investor or an investor to go and evaluate the management of each and every company. So basically, there are various parameters for measuring the management or evaluating the management of a company, such as if a person finds out the holdings of the promoters in the company shares is more than 30%, then it may have a positive or as well as a negative impact on the shares of the company. The investor should invest in such company where the institutional holdings are comparatively more because this leads, this shows that the in, uh, institutional investors such as the banks have trust upon the company and its uh, growth or profit rate. So the uh, investor should also see whether the tax rate or the tax which the company is paying is matching with the profit that the company's profit or the company is making on loss or not because this is a very essential parameter for measuring the management of the company because this might show whether the uh, company is manipulating its profit figures or not. The investor can get to know whether the company is genuine, the company's management is genuine or not if he finds out that the re uh, return on equity for from the last 3 to 5 years is more than 20%. So these are the parameters through which the management can the management of a company can be evaluated by an investor. The fifth chapter of this book talks about valuation it matters much valuation of stock is not science but it is an art it takes a constant practice of understanding the price fluctuation of the uh, shares in the stock market to understand the value of the shares the price of the shares has nothing to do with the value the share hold in the stock market the both of them are totally different now speaking about the investment by investing in the stock market an investor should always invest in premium quality shares of higher value rather than investing in low price low uh, price shares which are of mediocre, mediocre value. The sixth chapter of this book tells us when to buy and when to sell. It is never too late to invest in the stock markets. Investing in the stock market depends on whether we are having the right amount of funds and whether we are investing in the right, but, uh, right equity share or not. Let it be equity or preference share anything. But investment in the right share is more than investment in the wrong shares. We should not consistently buy and sell the shares. Like whenever, if the share price is today is 10 rupees, tomorrow it goes up to 12 rupees, immediately we sell the share to earn that extra 2 rupees. Rather, we should let the shares be with us so that we can understand that it might go up to a higher value after 2 to 3 years. It might come to a lower value after 2 to 3 days, but the ultimately how much the share price goes up, that is more important instead of you know, seeing the small margins by which it goes up. Holding loser shares for a longer period of time is a problem. Whenever we find out the signs that the share prices are going to be like going to face the ground, at that point of time only we should sell those shares. We should not hold the losing shares for a larger period of time. If we see that the share prices are slowly coming down or they are facing a slight decrease in the prices, then we should not immediately sell them rather we should hold them for some time and we see if it might go up in the future but if it in that case also it doesn't go up and it constantly decreases then at that point of time we can sell those shares the seventh chapter of this book tells us the do's and don'ts in the stock market the investment in the stock market for a longer period of time even the prices of big companies might fall down for a shorter period of time but if they are observed for a longer period of time, let it be 5 years or 6 years, then we will definitely find out the price of the shares of most of the companies goes up or either remains stable. But the stability of the shares prices cannot be determined by just seeing the price fluctuations for 1 or 2 days or let us say 1 or 2 months. The uh, second thing is that we, a person who is investing in the stock market should observe the stock prices but it doesn't mean that he should observe the stock prices every then and now. Like if a person is observing the stock prices at 7 p.m. in the evening, then immediately he observes the stock prices in 8 p.m. At 7 p.m. the stock price of a particular company is around rupees 10 and at 8 p.m. it comes to 9. That doesn't mean he will sell it immediately. So it creates unnecessary panic with the investor if he constantly observes the stock prices. So it is very necessary to observe the stock prices but to a certain limit. And up to a certain extent not that cons constantly keeping on checking the price of the shares whether they're going up or going down creating panic and selling the shares immediately or buying the shares he need to constantly and properly observe the share markets to understand it
the eighth chapter of this book tells us about how to construct your proper portfolio. The portfolio that an investor should have in the stock market is very essential. It is not necessary that an investor should have a portfolio of 80 stocks and all the stocks are improperly arranged. Rather, a portfolio of 10 stocks but they are properly arranged would fetch him higher return than a stock of 80 uh, than a portfolio of 80 stock properly diversified uh, stock means he should have the stocks invested in all various sectors supposing if a uh, investor invests only in automobile sectors automobile sector then the price of the stocks of all the companies in the automobile sector might come down all of a sudden rather he should invest in stocks like some in the core sector some in the automobile sector and some in the it sector accordingly the number of times the stock will move up or down the future it depends upon the earning growth that the company is having from the past years like uh, the if a company is having the earning growth of 6 to 7 percent from the past six, uh, from past 2 to 3 years would show that how many times the prices of the shares have moved up or down the ninth chapter of this book tells us about is it required to have an equity advisor or not the choosing of an equity advisor is very essential. The equity advisor should be chosen who is a, not a, uh, a fee based advisor rather than choosing a commission based advisor. Because the commission based advisor would earn the more if we buy or sell the shares the maximum number of times. But a fee based advisor will give us advisors based upon whether the equity shares investment will give us higher return or not. Direct equity investments will always fetch higher return than mutual fund provided the investor has sufficient knowledge regarding the investment of shares. An uh, equity advisor will definitely tell to invest in a particular stock or share but it ultimately depends on the investor whether he wants to invest in that share or not so he should properly investigate about the price and the fl price fluctuation of that particular stock in the stock, uh, stock of the company in the stock market before investing in any sort of uh, shares uh, no matter whether the equity advisor is very close to him or has been a loyal advisor to him for a longer period of time. The 10th chapter of this book tells us the quick formula for picking winning stocks. Seriously speaking, there is no such quick formula for picking the winning stocks in the stock market. Rather, it is very necessary to check the stock prices manually so that we can choose the right shares. Now, speaking about success in the stock market does not come from doing so many right things. Rather, it comes from avoiding the wrong things in the stock market such as the art of saying no. We may get advice from various equity advisors like to invest in this stock of the company, that stock of the company, but we, if we personally know that which stock of the company is right and which is wrong, then we can say no. We don't want to stop invest in that particular company and we want to invest in this company. So this art of saying no in the equity uh, market is very essential and important. So this was all about the book review of how to avoid loss and earn consistently in the stock market. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much.